Hey everybody, how are y'all doing today? It's Mary at Yard Art R.I. Gonna do something a little different today. Um, I'm, I've got my camera angle at a different angle than what I've done in the past. And um, I think it's gonna work out good. Let me get going over here so I can see comments. Over here, let's do command R. Let me get this pulled up. Hi everybody, hey Debbie, how are y'all? Hey Pam, I definitely have the camera at a different angle for a reason. I'm not crazy, although it could be, I don't know. One could debate that. Let me go over here so I can see comments. I gotta get over here. Um, but I had, uh, I think I put a post out today on the Academy and said, hey, you know, we've been doing videos a little bit differently. And let me go here. Hold on that, y'all. There we go. Got that. And um, one of the responses was that they liked the videos that we were doing in the Academy where we were doing multiple videos. I think like five or six videos for one item. So kind of showing the very beginning to the very, very end. Hey, Kelly. My sis is on. And um, so they said they liked that, but a, cust a customer, one of the guys said that they really wanted me to do, uh, to show you exactly how to lay or to position the brush when I'm shading. And I thought that was such a good idea. And well, her question was, can you show us how you position the brush when you're shading? Sure. And so what I've decided is I'm gonna look, do a little bit different. Hey Paula, how are you? Glad y'all could join me. Kelly's here, Paula's here, Debbie's here, Pam. I'm so glad y'all are hanging out with me. Um, so I'm going to actually, I'm going to turn this down a little bit more. And I'm hoping that by doing this, y'all are gonna, I know it's kind of a weird angle, but I'm hoping, I've got my view over here too, so I'm, I'm just gonna play with this just a little bit till I think it's pretty good. Um, and that way, y'all are gonna be able to see a different angle than what you've normally seen. And perhaps that's gonna be helpful when um, you know, you're trying to figure out how you wanna do and put the, um, the brush on the board, so to speak, when you're trying to do shading. Because honestly, I know that probably for most everybody, when you're doing yard art or when you're trying to kind of do the style of what we teach, of yard art that is, um, Probably the hardest thing for a lot of you guys would be shading and or outlining. So let's talk about shading a little bit. I'm going, this is a small, what I would consider a pretty small area. And so on your smaller areas, make sure you have a smaller brush. That's, that's one thing. And when I'm doing this and I'm going like this, you, I, I saw a lot of people when we had that academy party, I saw a lot of people going like this. But the trick is, is you go like this, okay? So let me tell you what that means. I'm trying to show. So I'm going to dip this to where I just get the corner where you have like a triangle. Can y'all see that? Here's your triangle. Just a triangle there on that edge. This is what is gonna go here. So you wanna make sure you position that where you're doing like this have quite enough paint there, but that's okay. You can always come back and put some more paint. And you're gonna go up like this. Get that out of the way. And I always keep the edge of the paint to the edge of the design. This case, that would be the edge of the ear that I'm doing, right? Because you want the most paint out here on this edge right here. The least amount of paint would be only what I would think of as the interior of the design. So I'm going to, once again, I'm going to take that brush. Um, oh, thank you, Lindsay. Hey, Rachel. Hey, Ruth. I'm glad y'all are here. I'm just doing something kind of different. It's I know it's a weird camera angle, but I'm hoping that it's going to be informative. And um, it's an angle that I don't normally do at, but hey, you know, we do what we can to try to learn something or try to teach something. So again, I'm putting the paint on this tip right there. Whereas this up here doesn't have any paint on it. All the paint is down here on this tip. And then I would come up here by the hair. 
Now, my brush, I can just feel it because I've done this a long time. My brush doesn't have any water in it. So I just dipped it a little bit in the water and kind of just did that and took the water back out. Because you do want a little bit of water. You don't, If this brush is sopping wet, you don't want that, okay? So you put a little water in there and then you lay that on the paper towel. So then you're gonna come over here and we did, uh, I think we have six, well, we do have six of these designs uh, and so, cause elves are always usually pretty popular. And I just keep dipping that paint and coming back down and having the edge of that brush go right on the edge of the design. So the edge of the paint, that the edge that has all the paint is the edge, is uh, what you put on the edge of the design. Then I would come back. Now when I'm shading, I have the brush this position, right? But now I'm gonna come back and put a few brush strokes and I'm gonna go this position. I'm gonna make it a smaller, a smaller, um, let me put this up there closer, brush stroke. Y'all y'all give me some feedback. Tell me if this is, I think this is going better as far as you're seeing. It's kind of a weird angle, but. Uh, and then I come over here. Hold on, let me scoot this over y'all can see. I come over here and go on the outside of that ear and just come down. And I'm, I'm exaggerating and going a little slower than normal, but I think I'm, I'm just trying to, not trying to say y'all, you know, are not getting it, but I'm just trying to go real slow to make sure that what I'm showing is easy to, is, you know, as easy to understand as possible. And then I would turn the brush this way and maybe do a few little of things like that, right? So then when you come up here by the hair, I would do a, just a few soft strokes, just kind of going along like that, along the, um, following that same contour you're doing right there. Love the camera angle. I'm not very good on shading, so this really helps. Good view for me. Thank you, Ruth, for that. Thank you, Paula. Thank you, Pam. I hear you. I see you. Uh, I'm looking at the angle, too. I think it is good. Y'all, in my heart of hearts, and y'all probably have already figured this out, and Ashley is uh, just like her mother in this regard. In my heart of hearts, I'm a teacher. And so anything that I can do to display, to show, to illustrate, to direct, to give insight, to coach, I'm going to do. So that's just, uh, it's just in my DNA, y'all. <laughs> I like doing it. All right, so I'm gonna keep doing this. I'm gonna keep putting it in on that corner, and then I'm gonna come and notice I'm going straight like this, coming down, and that's not perfect, is it? I kind of goofed that up. It's a little bit bigger than what I liked. So what I would do, because that's a little bigger than I like your fingers or your friend. And notice it didn't pick all of that up, did it? It left that, I, I'm cool with that. I'm gonna come back and show you why I'm cool with that later. And then I would do something like that. And again, I'm going slower because, uh, what may, uh, yes. Okay, so De 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 thank you, Debbie, for that. Debbie's saying, uh, we were at the shop at a party one day and Debbie was doing hers. I don't think she minds me sharing this. I, I did the wrong end there, y'all. Debbie was doing hers where she was trying to shade with this tip kind of angled over. This end of the brush needs to be straight up to the ceiling. In other words, this is going to, this brush is perpendicular to this surface. Ooh, y'all, I'm talking about in math terms. Isn't that crazy? Because I'm not good at math, but I do know what perpendicular means. So um, if you're trying to shade with this brush laying down, that's not going to good. That's not going to be good. Thank you, Debbie, for that. That's nice of you to let me share your, your thing. Um, so you want to have this straight up, okay? So watch what I do. I've got all the paint over here on this end. In fact, I think it was Zilma. I don't know if she's on tonight with us, but I think she was the one that said, can you show us when you're shading how to put the, uh, the brush on the board? And I was like, absolutely. And that's what made me think about um, changing the camera angle. It really wasn't me thinking. It was somebody else kind of said, hey, can you do that? Sure. So I would, I'll keep going over here and dipping into the paint, all right? And again, this is where all my paint is. Don't have much paint on this edge. 
So the edge that you don't have much paint on, that's the edge that you want is further, further from the design. In this case, I'm going around the eye. The eye is the design. Okay, and then you're gonna do this. Got a little bit in the green, but that's okay. So now I've been doing it this way, right? The brush is going this way. I'm making a wider stroke. When you want a thinner stroke, instead of the brush going this way, go this way. You can see just from that angle right there, when it goes this way, you're going to have a skinnier stroke. And so what I would do is I'd probably do this, something like that. And I have part, the fan is drying out my brush, but that's okay. I'll just keep dipping it and I'd come over here like that, right? Now, what you could do too, just to kind of soften up these cheeks, you could kind of um, come around here and just kind of soften up that oval. I'm not really changing the oval. I'm just kind of putting a little bit of shading around it. And here's the thing, y'all. If you will keep after this shading, especially uh, doing faces. I know it's, you know, when you don't know how to do something and you're learning, I, I know it's frustrating. And I think I've said to y'all before, I've thrown many a thing in the trash. Hey, Rachel. Hey, Kathy. I'm glad y'all are here hanging out with me. Uh, I've thrown so many things in the trash and it's not necessarily because I was frustrated that I didn't get the brush stroke right, but uh, I'm very wild and crazy and will try really bizarre things. And sometimes that works and sometimes it doesn't. So, but you've got to give yourself permission to say, you know what, it's okay if I screw this up. I might not get it tonight, but if I keep coming back over and over and over, I will get it. So that's really kind of the mentality you have to have. And if you'll keep working on those faces, I promise you, you will get better. And then, because to me, faces are the hardest, y'all, honestly, uh, that's where you're going to have the most uh, angst because your face is the focal point, right? Um, so I've got that same um, brush and I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna do the hat, okay? And I'm gonna pull this back a little bit so you can see the hat. It's the same concept, same brush. I've still got some paint in there, but that's okay. I'm gonna put it on the tip of the brush. Can y'all see it? Maybe if I put it like this, see the tip of that brush? I got the paint right there on the tip of that brush. Yeah. And I'm just gonna take that red and I'm going, to, I don't have near enough paint on there. So I'm gonna pick that red up again. And red can be a little bit harder to deal with. So you may have to kind of go back and forth a little bit like what I'm doing. But if you'll do that, you'll get a really pretty soft edge on your painting, which is what you're gonna like. Or, you know, if you like that look, just kind of go back and forth. Now, I want to show you, see that red stroke? It's not perfect, is it? But I'm going to leave it alone because I like that. Part of my painting is, is I go for stuff that's not so perfect. Because I know I'm going to come in here with the script liner and I'm going to make this really crisp. I'm not so much worried about that being crisp. So again, I'll come over here. And this is a smaller brush, so I'm having a hard time keeping as much paint in there as what I'd like. But it's a smaller brush because I have to have that because this is a smaller area. So hopefully this is helping, you know, fill in some gaps if you've been wondering about certain, you know, how to, how to shade or anything like that. Um, and if you don't get enough paint, paint there the first time, put some more on that edge of that brush and do it again and again. And just this little bit of time that I'm talking to y'all, showing you how to do this hat. Look how different this hat looks just from the little bit of time that I've done, you know, a little bit of brush stroking. The red got left off here during the base coat, but I'm not gonna worry about that. Watch what I'm gonna do. That's really supposed to be red is what I'm saying. I'm gonna color that whole thing shading. It's such a small area. Now I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna show you I'm gonna have to kind of get up where I'm, again, I'm wanting that camera to capture what I'm doing. So, <clears throat> let me do this. I would start, and again, you can always use your pinky if you want to help anchor. Sometimes I do that. It's late at night for me, because I got up at four o'clock, so my, my hands are getting kind of tired. So 
So sometimes I'll use my pinky to anchor that. And then I might do that. And I would come around here like so. There you go. I'm gonna do this some more over here. And I would put a brush stroke probably something like that. And I just keep touching or dipping the edge of my brush in this paint. Over and over, okay? And then I would come over here Yeah, but I think it was Zelma who asked me for this. So anytime y'all see something that you think would help you that we could do, uh, you know, maybe do differently. When she said that, I thought, you know, I can definitely show that. And then I got to thinking, well, let's start with a different camera angle. And, uh, okay. So I've got my red done. Now, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to do this uh, shading green. <clears throat> Oh, Zelma, you're here. She says, I can see that. Thank you. You're so welcome. You know, Zelma, you're the one that made me think about changing the camera angle. And I don't know why I've never thought about that. So I'm glad, I'm glad y'all say, y'all speak up because that just helps everybody. Sometimes, you know how it is when you know how to do something, you get so stuck in your own head. It's hard to sometimes always remember what I need to do to help other people get there, you know. And I would just do something on that uh, edge of the green. And I just keep dipping this brush. You're gonna put your brush on the board like this for that wide stroke, right? And you're going to make sure it's a wide stroke around the perimeter of your design. That's how I do that. But if you turn the brush this way, hey, Nancy. Nancy, I did uh, uh, approve you today, I think, in Painter's Club. So hopefully you can get in. Hey, hey, hey Kim, how are you? I'm glad y'all are here. Hi, Carla. I'm, I'm talking about brush strokes today. So this is the way you would lay the brush for the wide stroke. This is the way you would ink, turn the brush for a thin stroke. And watch what I do. My style, if you like my style, that all it is is a lot of times is I just come back and put another brush stroke along the, ex, the outside, or I'm sorry, along the inside of that stroke. So that's your wide stroke, that's your thin stroke. And y'all know I'm gonna pick up the brush here in a little while, we're gonna do some white on this green present. So there you go. That's, that's how you do it as far as that particular style, if you like that style. So let's go back up to the hat. Now I'm gonna show you, it's the same thing that I did on that red. I'm just dipping in the, edge, in the corner of my brush. Now in this case, because I have such a small area, I'm not gonna shade the top part of the green. I'm not gonna shade that. And the reason I'm not gonna shade that is because I don't have a whole lot of, of uh, base color green showing. If I shade both this top and the bottom, then I'm not gonna see anything but dark green. So that's just too much. And then I'm gonna kinda just come over here like that. And in that little bit of time, <clears throat> you know, I haven't been on here very long, and y'all know I can paint pretty fast, but I've slowed down, and we haven't been on this live very long, and I already have this thing looking much better than when we started, just in terms of, you know, the shading, okay? So I've got my, uh, I think this was done in light blue. So I'm going to bring this out, and I, I'm always the person that a lot of times, if you see what I paint, I'll start and I like to do two or three shades of one color uh, because to me, that's how you get that kind of dramatic look to something. And that's what I'm going for, the, the little drama kind of thing. So this is the light blue, this is the beard blue. Now my brush is all kind of, everything's pinched together because I've been using the same brush. So when I know that I wanna shade something, this brush with the bristles all pinched together is not the way to go. So what I do is I'll, I'll, I have quite a bit of pressure. I would say out of 
10 being the hardest I could possibly do. I've got about a five on here and I will do this brush like that. And pick it up. Now, I know a lot of people would say you're ruining the brush and I am hard on brushes, that's true, I am. But I'll spend the money and buy new ones when these things just literally will not do anything else. But if you do that <laughs> and kind of get those bristles to fan out, then you've got a chance of picking up some paint. You cannot pick up paint when all your bristles are clumped together, okay? So I'm gonna pick up some paint just like I've been doing. And this has a lot of water in it. And that's why you're seeing that uh, paint look kind of separated like. I did Windex this, so I know that's not the case. But I'll come back and work on that. Okay, I'm gonna keep going. And a lot of this is just twisting your fingers and your hands or your wrist. Hold on a minute, let's try something. I've got too much water in that brush. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do this on my paper towel. I'm gonna sit here, just kind of push that brush down and get a lot of that water out. I'm gonna go back here. Now that I've got a drier brush and try this again. And that'll dry and I'll come back in and kind of quote doctor it up a little bit more. And I'm gonna come over here. See, I just twirl that around like that. Yes, Zelma, you put the triangle corner of the brush to the outside, you bet. Yes, ma'am, 100% of the time, all the time. Um, you're gonna put that triangle corner of the paint out here on the edge of this present, on the edge right here we're on the thing, on the shoe, if you will. You're gonna put the edge of the corner of the paint here on the inside, right here at this eye. Hold on a minute, you can't see it. I guess it helped if I put it in. What the heck, I thought I had it. Hold on a minute, let me try this. Okay, see what I did on the eyes? So the edge, that triangle of paint comes right over here close to the white. It comes right there close to the white. The edge or the triangle of the paint butts up against the black hair, right? And in this case, the red, I know this is a pain y'all, but that's okay. I'll just adjust it a little bit more. The edge of the triangle of the paint, the red comes right here by the white and then right here by the red. So yes, you're right. Okay, so I think I'm not, I mean, I am gonna do this. I'm gonna show you something. Normally, I probably wouldn't um, shade these small little hands. And if you don't want to, then don't do that because it's just a small area. Again, I have that number 10 brush. I just washed it out. I'm gonna get the, the water out of it. I'm gonna fan it out a little bit. Okay. So I'm taking this, and because I've got such a little area, I am putting a very, very small amount of paint. Can you see how much paint I have there? Very small amount. Um, because if you don't watch it, you'll get so much shading purple in there that the whole thing turns dark purple, and you don't want that. And I'm gonna take that color, that edge of triangle of paint, and I'm gonna go, there you go. And the trick is in this case, I don't have a lot of paint on the brush. The reason I don't have a lot of paint is because it's a small area. Okay, there we go, there we go. Do a few brush strokes. Not a whole lot. I'm gonna leave the camera right there and I'm gonna kind of get up and I'm gonna do this. And then I would just come back with this 
doing a few brush strokes. Nothing too serious. Now, I know that there's not enough water in here for what I'm fixing to do. So I'm gonna put some water in here. What the heck, y'all? Why is everything I need all, all over the place? Hold on that, y'all. Okay. I put uh, some more water in this purple and I'm fixing to thin it down. Now, the reason I'm thinning this down more is I'm fixing to outline those purple fingers and the little mitten, hands, whatever you wanna call it. And if I don't have this paint thinned down, then it's gonna all wanna stick to my script liner and it's not gonna wanna fall. The paint is not gonna wanna lay down on that board. It's just gonna wanna clump up on my script liner. So. All right, so let's check it out. So same color that I shaded in. And you know, you have to stir, stir, stir. I feel like half my life is spent stirring. Okay, I'm going to put, um, uh, she says she's gonna be practicing. That's good, uh, Zelma. I promise you, if you just practice for a little while, you will, you will get better. I don't think you're gonna be perfect, you know, like the way you would wanna be early on and there's a lot of days sometimes my work turns out and it's not really what i wanted as far as being what i would think is perfect y'all know i'm kind of messy like i'm not uh i'm not worried about trying to have everything perfect but what i mean is having it look the way i want it to look and sometimes you know that just takes i don't know some days we have better days i hope i'm not giving y'all any kind of flashing y'all with the boobs y'all i'm trying to be not do that <laughs> Okay, and I just kind of come in here and I'm just dipping that brush and doing that. And already my little hands look pretty doggone cute because I shaded them and I highlighted, I'm sorry, I shaded them and I uh, outlined them in the same color. See, that way my little hands look. All I have to left to do really on those hands is to do some, um, what do you call it? Highlighting. Now, one thing I'm gonna do on the feet, and you don't have to do this, you could definitely do the feet in black if you wanted to, but let's do this. Hey, Terry, how are you? All right, let's see. Okay, so I've got this. I'm putting some more paint in here. And I'm gonna stir, 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 stir. This is um, number six navy blue. And I said a little earlier that my style is a lot of times I like to put the same color family, just three different uh, shades of the color on something. And that's just what I like to do. Yes, when I shade, when I'm sorry, Zelma, good question. Very good question. When I outline, I'm trying to get it to go down into that C and C line. That's why if you're doing that, you can get away with that C and C line being scratched into the surface and it's okay because you've got a lot of dark colored paint in there and it's really going to recess so far back, you're not gonna see it. So I just basically take this script liner and then I come down here and I might follow the curve again. Now you see the difference and what this looks like and what that looks like. And I just spent literally maybe 20 seconds, I don't know, putting that in there, uh, something like that. Hi, Charlie, how are you? I'm glad you're joining us. We're having a good discussion tonight about, um, hey Ruth, uh, about just brush strokes and, and how to shade and, and, and how to uh, outline. And I just put this quite a bit of paint on my, uh, script liner and I just go around the edge there and you can see by doing that I have started with the base coat of a light blue I shaded in the beard blue and I outlined in the navy blue and that's just something I like you know that's just kind of my style and I'll just do some brush strokes like that and already now I've got two little uh, feet that I think are just as darling as they can be. 
just as cute as they can be. So I'm gonna put that away and I'm gonna get the black now. Black is what we're gonna use on the majority of all of this. Not all of it, but the majority of it on um, outlining. Okay, so let's go, I think the best way to do this is, these feet are really wet, so I don't wanna screw that up, y'all. There we go, I think. You can tell I'm sitting here kind of play with this. Okay, now I'm going to use a lot of black <clears throat> between the colors of this hat. And by the time I put that on there, you're gonna see why I didn't put as much shading on there. Again, I've just got this. And on this part, I'm gonna put a pretty wide uh, brush stroke on this part. On here, not so much. This one is not gonna be that wide. And I'm just going down there in that C and C line between the green and the red. That's all I'm doing. Mm-hmm. Then I, on these parts like this white right here, I would come back and I will, I will put more pressure on that brush just so you can really have a bigger brush stroke on that. Let me come over here. I'm gonna meet, make this line meet that first line that I drew. I'm gonna come over here. Now, just my personal choice, I'm not putting a lot of black right in here. I'm gonna show you why here in a little bit. Cause I know I got a little plan to put some white in there. There we go. All right, I think I'm good on the hat, y'all. I think I'm happy with that. Now let's come over here to the face. I don't, I, this red, uh, black paint, first of all, I don't have enough paint in here, so let me get a little bit more paint, and I'm gonna have to put a little bit more water in here too, y'all. This is probably the best part of my day, y'all, hanging out with y'all. Getting to teach something that I, I'm just very passionate about, and getting to hang out with you guys, because y'all have a similar interest. Yes, it does, Nancy, you are so right, and I think that's what's so powerful. Uh, Sheba, no baby. I have a new puppy, y'all. Y'all know I had one of my dogs passed away, and uh, the other one was so depressed. And so we've been waiting, and I think we finally found the right puppy, but she's over here in the water container trying to drink the paint. No baby, no baby. And I just got her today, so she just is so, she's the sweetest thing. But she, she's just a typical puppy. She's curious about everything. So let me put this up out of the way. No oh, baby, you can't have that. No, you can't drink that. She's wanting to drink this nasty paint water, y'all. I'll pick that up. Sorry about that. But you know you have to take care of the critters, y'all. Okay, so I'm going to, uh, I'll let y'all see her here in a minute. I'll tell you what at the end, I'll put her, she's the cutest thing you ever saw. Sheba, come here, Sheba. Come here, pretty girl, come here. She is uh, probably about a couple months old, and I think she's got some great Dane in her. She, she's gonna be a big dog. Um, <laughs> she, of course, now I want her to come over here. She wants, she'll come back. So I am taking this. I'm not putting a tremendous amount of paint on here, and I'm not putting a whole lot of pressure either. Um, because this is the eye, I'm going to be a little bit more delicate right here. I'm kind of go up like that, right? And I'm going to do the same over here. If you don't have enough paint, just go back and dip it back into there. And I'm trying to get this uh, script liner just to go right into that CNC line, which is kind of like the groove in here on the uh, surface of the board. And in just a very short amount of time, I have decent looking eyes. Now, 
if you decide that you uh, want to put eyelashes on here, I'm gonna put some on here. I'm not gonna make them real big, but I'm gonna show you what to do. If you like that kind of thing. Ah, oh, Ruth, thank you. Uh, Lindsay said, yes, it's so nice to have something in common with others. I'm at a stage where I needed more friends with common interests. You know, and Lindsay, I, I totally feel you because like I see people that they're really into certain things like, I don't know, maybe football, for example. My husband loves football. And y'all, I'm glad that he has something he loves. But it just doesn't do anything for me. It just doesn't, you know. But I know a lot of people love that. And because, I don't know if this is sexist to say nowadays, but because this is a boy, I'm going to go easy on this. And I, if it was a girl, I'd probably put double that and maybe some longer eyelashes. But, of course, if you want your boy to have really long eyelashes and double that, you know, you, you could put it on there, whatever you want. But it's just that script line or kind of just going out and as you get up out here you pick up off the board so um nancy says my daughter and son-in-law just adopted two huskies you know we took nancy i just i adopted this from the pound i, I just always if i get a dog it's usually a rescue or from the pound and um so we took our current dog because she can be a little bit kind of crazy and we did a couple meet and greets and there was most of the dogs my dog just did not warm up to and she growled at them and so we were over there at the pound for quite a while but you know it's it's kind of important that you get you know a good match and i think we did of course all afternoon at the pound those dogs all that barking man i was about to have a headache but i think we we it paid off because we got a little she's just a mutt but she's the cutest thing and she's about four or five months old, maybe. And she's full of it, because as most puppies are. And my dog, Ellie Mae, loves to play. And so that's really what I wanted. I wanted somebody that Ellie Mae, because Ellie Mae's been very depressed since we had to put our other dog to sleep. It's been very hard on her. If it was for me, just me, I probably wouldn't have got a, another dog this quick because I get so attached, it just breaks my heart, you know? But Ellie Mae's really been suffering. And so far, we just had the dog just this afternoon. But they seem to be playing pretty good. So that's really kind of lifting my spirits. It's hard to lose an animal, you know. And if you've lost one, you know what I'm talking about. And I think most people have, you know. Um, because the dog that we lost was a very, very special animal to me. And so that was really hard. And not that Sheba's gonna take his place because nobody or nothing will take that dog's place in my heart. But, you know, Ellie Mae, is, she's been really, really depressed. So that's what made us go to, we went to the pound last week and didn't see anything, but we went back again today. And I, all I'm doing is just outlining and putting this paint in that CNC line. That's really all I'm doing. Notice I didn't outline the face yet. I will, but it's gonna be a little bit different color than black. It's gonna be a regular outline, but it's gonna be a different color than black. And I'd probably come up on that white collar and stop about right there. Yes, it does. Thank you, Debbie. Uh, a lot of times people really worry about imperfections during uh, base coating or even shading. I don't because I know tricks and I know how to cover that up if I need to. So don't sweat the small stuff. What you do is you just cover it up with shading, with the outlining or highlighting. And if that doesn't work, then once everything is done, you just go back and dab a little paint of the color that you screwed up. That's, that's really pretty, it's not hard. So when you make a bobo, if you stop, I don't ever stop. I just leave the bobo there. I'm going to deal with that later. I'm, I, you know, that's kind of the way I do it. Hey, Holly, how are you? Thank you so much. Yes, I love, love, love these elves. And, um, you know, Christmas time and elves, they kind of go hand in hand. And it's kind of one of those guys, if you do elves, for those of you that sell if you uh, do elves, you usually will always sell elves, usually. I see I got a little spot right here, and that's probably a bobo on my part, but I'm not too worried about it. Like I said, I'm gonna show you how to come back and fix that here in a minute. Okay, all right, let me go over here and wash out the brush. I had to move it so uh, Sheba would not drink the dirty paint water. 
because she's just a pup. All right, let's see. I'm going to take my shading red and I'm going to outline this face, but it's going to be not in black, but in shading red. That's just kind of what I like. It, I like it because it puts some red uh, uh, close to that face. And faces need to have, in my opinion, they need, regardless if you're going for a light tone or a darker tone, it doesn't matter. It needs to have some, some warmth. And that's why I'm going with the shading red. Give it a little bit of warmth. It's not something you would really notice, uh, probably, because shading red is, is so dark. Uh, you wouldn't, it's not glaring at you that you would notice that, but it's just a, a little touch that I like to use. Okay. And I might even come back and do, no, I'm going to put white on that. Okay, so let's go white now. Let's go highlights. Come here, she. Come here. Come here. I'm going to show you all Come here, Sheila. Can y'all see her? Hold on. Here she is, y'all. So she's, I don't know, y'all, maybe four or five months old. Sheba, can you say hi to everybody? And she's the only one that my dog would get, uh, what do you call it, get along with. So I had to make sure. Sheba's very easygoing. She's the sweetest pup. Her name is Sheba, and she's been very good so far. Of course, it's only been a few hours, y'all. But you say she's been being very good so far. And if Nan would sit and hold her all the time, which you know I have been holding her, uh, she would really like that. She's just the sweetest thing. And y'all, the pound that I, I we went to the pound at, uh, in Pasadena, and they do such a good job. You know, Lord, there's so many animals there. You just want to take all of them. Of course you can. That's not realistic. But y'all, if I, I would if I could. I promise you that. <laughs> and anybody who knows me knows that that's a very sincere statement. <laughs> all right. So I'm going to turn that camera angle back down like I had it before. I'm going to talk more. Uh, I'm just putting some paint in here. And I'm going to turn this down the way we've had it. Almost this whole video. And... I'm going to, now, I think that, I want you to just kind of look at it and watch what I'm fixing to do. It's going to take me about 30 seconds, maybe a minute, but it's going to change the look of what we got going on, okay? So what I would do is I would kind of come in here and I would put white streaks on everything, on, on this hat, on every color. something like that okay I'm also gonna kind of come in here on the face and I like to put a lot of white highlights on the face because to me it just kind of brings it out a little bit more and makes things a little bit lighter and it's not anything other than just some brush stroking here and there Okay. And on the hair, I'd probably do this. That's it. When you, if you have solid black hair and you want to highlight it or outline it in white, the best thing I can tell you is less is better. You do not want to get too crazy and put a whole bunch of white on there. Because if you do, it's not going to look good. You're not going to like it. And on this, I would just come in here inside this box a little bit, do this, something like that. And then I would come over here. And I'm gonna go in the middle with my highlight. Here, I did a bobo, y'all, and I said earlier, I'm gonna show you what to do with bobos because this white paint wasn't too white. I'll just kind of come in here and put a little bit more white paint in here. And if I get over here on this black, no worries, tomorrow morning, I'll touch up that black. Put a little bit of white paint in there. 
Now, I do have a bobo right here where I did not get enough paint on the little, can y'all see this little bitty space right here where I did not get enough green paint right there? Just a wee bit. I don't let that stop me. What I do is I wait till the end. Let me show you. And then I'm gonna get a little bit of green paint And I'm gonna show you, I'll just take a little bit. Don't take much. Actually, I'll probably just put some green paint on this table, y'all. I'm gonna dab that in here like this. And I'll just come up. I'm trying to see if this is a good angle for y'all or not. Yeah, I'm gonna put just a little bit of green paint right there. That's it. So when I say I made a bobo, I see a little bit right here. I will just come back and I'll put a little bit of paint on that uh, script liner and come in here and just put a little bit of paint right where I want it. So if you make a bobo, no worries. It's all good. Go back at the very end and just kind of script liner it. There we go, I put the story off and see it real good. I'm gonna take this out of here. Hold on, I know it's gonna jiggle, I'm sorry. Okay, and I'm gonna show you what that looks like. So if you just see it, it's pretty cool. Let's come on down. There you go, pretty simple. Hey, thanks for hanging out, y'all, I had a good time. Just kind of showing you everything. I know this at camera angle is kind of willy wonky, so my bad. But Ashley will be on. I'll be on tomorrow, y'all, doing um, another Elf. It'll be probably tomorrow morning. And then Ashley will be coming live Wednesday, I think through Saturday, because we got a lot of, she's got three wise men, I think, to do, and some, maybe some other stuff. So anyway, thank y'all for checking, uh, hanging out with me. Y'all want to see my other dog? Can y'all see her? That's Ellie Mae. Ellie Mae, can you say hi to everybody? Ellie, can you say hi? Say that my name's Ellie Mae. Y'all, she's the crazy one, but she's my dog and I love her. You know how that goes. Ellie Mae, uh, I took her to meet and greet today, and Sheba was the only dog that Ellie Mae got along with. Huh, Ellie? Yeah. We had to get a puppy dog that Ellie could get along with. Can y'all tell I'm crazy about my animals? It's ridiculous. But anyway. <laughs> Hey, thanks for hanging out, y'all. It's fixing to pour down rain here. Oh, it's been doing that off and on here too, Kim. So I, I get it. I totally, totally get it. So Holly, y'all, thanks for hanging out. Ruth, love seeing y'all hang out with me. Hey, y'all go paint some yard art or door hanger or paint something. And uh, we'll be seeing you soon. Bye-bye.